A cordial greeting. Today is Thursday, October 23, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 6.15 a.m. local time in the Caribbean, where we continue monitoring the evolution of Tropical Storm Melissa. In the infrared satellite animation, we can see that Tropical Storm Melissa continues struggling with wind shear from the west, which has kept the system disorganized and with maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. In fact, since yesterday afternoon, several Hurricane Hunter aircraft have investigated the cyclone and found an extremely disorganized circulation that has been moving quite erratically during the past 24 hours, and it is forecast that this wind shear will continue for at least the next 24 hours. However, starting Friday, conditions may become much more favorable for significant strengthening of Tropical Storm Melissa, and it continues to be forecast to strengthen into a powerful hurricane as it passes near or over Jamaica and eventually eastern Cuba or western Haiti. And since the rain and strongest winds remain displaced to the east of the circulation, some showers continue affecting parts of southern Haiti and the Dominican Republic, where it is anticipated that rainfall will continue over the next five to seven days, causing some flooding. But as you will see in the next few minutes, for now, the worst impacts are expected over Jamaica, eastern Cuba, the southern Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. And particularly for Jamaica, preparation should be completed during the day today. Let's zoom in on the infrared satellite animation where we can see that the circulation looks asymmetric. In fact, the storm is so disorganized that the low-level center of circulation is located approximately 100 miles east-southeast of the mid-level circulation center. This definitely complicates the forecast significantly, since any relocation of the center could bring important changes to the trajectory and also leaves us with a lot of uncertainty regarding intensity over the next 24 hours. And although it is very likely that it will eventually move toward or over Jamaica, there are still some less probable scenarios where the system could strengthen more rapidly during the next 24 hours and move along a much more eastern track. This is precisely why residents of Haiti and the Dominican Republic should remain alert and closely follow updated forecasts. And if we look at the latest projections from the specialized track models, you can see that over the next 48 to 72 hours, Tropical Storm Melissa is projected to move slowly northward and between Saturday and Sunday should take a turn toward the west, at least through early next week passing just south of or over Jamaica in about five days. But notice that we still have uncertainty between a more eastern trajectory between Jamaica and Haiti and one farther west passing to the west of Jamaica. Regardless of which path it takes, the cyclone is expected to linger in this area for five to six days and, as you will soon see, would bring excessive rainfall totals with widespread flooding and landslides across Jamaica. Also, Notice that eventually almost all models show a path over eastern Cuba and then over the southern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. In terms of intensity, most models project that in about 4 to 5 days, it should strengthen into a Category 3 or Category 4 hurricane. In fact, some models continue projecting that it could strengthen into a Category 5 hurricane when it is closest to Jamaica. The uncertainty in the forecast is clearly seen in the American model ensemble, with some members showing a much more eastern trajectory over Haiti others crossing over Jamaica and eastern Cuba, and others maintaining a path just south of Jamaica and then moving northeastward over Cuba and the Bahamas. And if we look at the projections from the European model ensemble, though with considerable spread among the different solutions, they generally show an initial northward movement followed by a westward turn, passing just south of or over Jamaica and then moving northeastward over eastern Cuba, the southern Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. As for the Google AI ensemble model, which has been very accurate during this hurricane season and which the National Hurricane Center is also considering in its forecast. Although it maintains several scenarios, it also generally favors a track south of or over Jamaica, and then over eastern Cuba, the southern Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Also, notice that nearly all ensemble members project a major hurricane developing near Jamaica, dramatically increasing the likelihood that Tropical Storm Melissa will eventually strengthen rapidly. Now, Let's look at the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, which was updated at 5 a.m. In general, they forecast a slow and erratic northward movement during the next 48 hours, and by Saturday, it is anticipated to strengthen into a hurricane, and then into a Category 3 or Category 4 hurricane between next Monday and Tuesday when it is just south of Jamaica. This forecast aligns very well with the European model projection, in which Jamaica would experience the worst impacts from future Hurricane Melissa. The latest projection shows the system moving extremely slowly south of Jamaica at least through mid-next week. Also, notice the great concern we have because the European model forecasts a Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane directly impacting Jamaica between Tuesday night and early Wednesday morning, and also moving over eastern Cuba as a Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane. And if the European model scenario occurs, 
which aligns very well with the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, see the projection of wind gusts over the next seven days. First, for Jamaica, from tomorrow Friday through at least Wednesday or Thursday, tropical storm and hurricane conditions are expected. In the European model projection, some wind gusts over 310 km per hour could affect the island between Monday and Tuesday as the system passes over the region. Then, winds over 300 km per hour, 186 miles per hour, could affect eastern Cuba and wind gusts over 250 km per hour could impact the southern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands toward the end of next week. Additionally, with that extremely slow movement affecting Jamaica for approximately 5 to 6 days, it would leave excessive rainfall totals, with projections showing over 600 mm across the entire island, potentially causing catastrophic flooding and landslides. Thus, if the European model scenario occurs, Jamaica would definitely experience devastating impacts, while for eastern Cuba, the European model projects between 250 and 400 mm from early next week, and for southern Haiti and the Dominican Republic, between 200 and 400 mm. Now, let's look at another scenario, the one shown by the American model. In fact, it's quite different from the official National Hurricane Center forecast, as this model projects a relocation of the center farther east, which would bring the system into southern Haiti between Saturday and Sunday, and then slowly move across Hispaniola until Tuesday, eventually moving into Atlantic waters. Although this scenario is very unlikely, if it somehow happens, it would be the worst-case scenario for the Dominican Republic and Haiti, where the American model forecasts tropical storm force winds affecting Hispaniola throughout the weekend and early next week. Of course, this would also leave the highest rainfall totals over the Dominican Republic and Haiti, with projections exceeding 1,000 mm over the next five days. But I want to emphasize that this scenario is currently extremely unlikely, yet since it cannot be ruled out, we urge residents of Haiti and the Dominican Republic to remain attentive to the National Hurricane Center forecast. Lastly, let's look at a scenario that falls between the European and American model projections, shown by the German model, which develops a Category 2 hurricane and brings it close to western Haiti and near northern Jamaica. Under this scenario, some tropical storm and hurricane force winds could affect western Haiti, parts of eastern Jamaica, eastern Cuba, the Turks and Caicos Islands, and the southern Bahamas. Also, if it takes this path between Haiti and Jamaica, the highest rainfall totals would occur over southeastern and southern portions of the Dominican Republic, southern Haiti, eastern Cuba, the southern Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Well, I will continue monitoring the progress of Tropical Storm Melissa to keep you informed. Remember that for now, Jamaica is forecast to be impacted by a Category 4 hurricane with tropical storm and hurricane conditions lasting for an extended period of five to six days. Therefore, in Jamaica, residents should prepare for devastating winds and widespread flooding across the entire island. In the long term, residents of eastern Cuba, the southern Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands could also experience the impacts of a major hurricane. Meanwhile, for Haiti and the Dominican Republic, although it is not currently expected to pass directly over the region, Outer rain bands will continue bringing heavy showers throughout the rest of the week and into mid-next week. Thus, a high potential for flooding remains, particularly across southern parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. As you know, under this special coverage, later today I'll update the forecast with a new video. So before I go, and so you don't miss this content, I invite you to give this video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent day. And please, residents of Jamaica, complete your preparations. See you later.